Hello my dear friends, our topic for discussion today is burns. So why should we learn about burns? Because burns can be happening as a minor burn somewhere in our household, everywhere it can happen. It can be sometimes deep burns or it can be a widespread burns like this. So it also happens in any age group from children. In children, the burns are more commonly scales. Scales means from water. The burns are from more commonly scales. In adolescents, there can be crackers. The burns, the type of burns, the method of burns changes. It becomes crackers and deeper burns. In adults, there can be associated non-thermal burn injury like chemical or electrical injury. So the burns extends through all ages. It can come in different types. It can come go through all ages. Now, even if you take which specialty, which specialty you choose, let it be family medicine, or it can be plastic surgery, post burn contracture, the patient can come. Urology, genital burns can come. Pediatrics, pediatric children will burn with burns will come to you. Radiology, again the requirement of burns, especially in esophageal burns, radiology requirement is there. Dermatology, burns will come with hypertrophic scar. Ophthalmology, there can be lid retraction or lid contracture in case of burns. General surgery, of course, the main uh, chunk of burns comes to general surgery. Emergency medicine, internal medicine, electrical burns can cause, again, cardiac arrhythmias. Anesthesiology, burns pain management. Physical medicine rehabilitation, rehabilitation after burns, physiotherapy, psychiatry. Patients with burns can come with depression. All these patients, all these cases, all the specialties, burns can come in some sort of way. So in whichever specialty you go, in whichever specialty you are, you should know about the treatment of burns. So we'll discuss the topic under the following headings. We'll start off with an introduction. We'll go to the pathophysiology of burns. We'll go to the emergency burn care, when to admit the patient, inhalational burns, the calculation of burns percentage, the depth of burns, how to assess, fluid resuscitation in burns, nutrition in burns, infection in burns, surgery in burns, and how to manage the outpatient burns, and finally regarding the non-thermal burn injury. So, burns has a multi-pronged attack. It does not, when we think about burns, first, what first comes to our mind is there are maybe about the skin burns and regarding the fluid resuscitation. Not beyond that. But burns acts as a multi-pronged attack. So we should know our enemy, how or in which all methods the bone burns attack our human body and then treat accordingly. So first coming to the, it can affect the respiratory system by inhalational burns. It can cause hypotension and shock affecting the circulatory system. In GIT, it can cause ileus and inflammation in the gastrointestinal system. It can make the patient highly susceptible for infection and in the peripheries it can cause constriction ring and gangrene to the patient. These are the different spectrum and the different systems in which the burns will affect. Let us see how it affects each system that is regarding the pathophysiology of burns coming to the respiratory system that is inhalational burns. So suppose the patient is when there is burns there will be hot air. The patient can be in the hot air. This hot air can damage the upper respiratory tract. This, is, this much part of the respiratory tract can be damaged by hot air. And if it is a steam burns, we know that in steam burns there is latent heat. So due to the latent heat, the burns can go into deeper tissue, to the deeper part of the respiratory system like the upper and lower part of the trachea. And burns can also produce smoke like that. Smoke particles can come. These smoke particles will go up to the lung and it will settle in the lung. Like cigarette smoking, the smoke particles can go up to the lung and can cause chemical pneumonitis. Is it over there? No. There can be metabolic poisoning. These particles in the birds, these gases in the birds, the gas produces like carbon monoxide or hydrocyanic acid. It can enter the bloodstream and result in acidosis and metabolic poisoning. Uh, what happens in carbon monoxide poisoning? In carbon monoxide poisoning, there is increased affinity of carbon monoxide to the hemoglobin and so oxygen will not get the hemoglobin. So that is regarding the carbon monoxide poisoning which results in tissue hypoxia. And the next part is a constriction ring. Due to the skin burns, 
there will be a strong scar formation uh, in the skin and which results in the mechanical obstruction of the respiratory movements resulting in a constriction ring and there will be a restrictive respiration and inadequate oxygenation. These are the different aspects of the inhalational injury. Now, how will we detect, detect, how will we know whether there is an injury like that? First, you should look about the burns around the face and neck. If there is burns around the face and neck, this, there is a chance for inhalational injury. Look for the history, history of being trapped in a burning room. If there is something, if there is something history like that, look for carbon monoxide poisoning and the patient has high chance of developing a chemical pneumonitis. And also look for change in voice due to the uh, laryngeal involvement of burns and look for the strider. So these are the features we have to look to see whether there is inhalational injury or not. Now coming to the circulatory system. What happens in burns? When there is burns, there is also a high amount of inflammation in the body. It triggers, due to the increased amount of surface burns, it triggers an inflammatory cascade with the help of cytokines, TNF-alpha, complements and neuropeptides. Due to the development of the inflammatory cascade, the permeability of the vessels changes due to the inflammation and there will be leakage of intravascular fluid into the extravascular component. There will be leakage of intravascular fluid into the extravascular component. So what happens to the intravascular fluid? The intravascular so and that, that there will be edema like that because due to the increased amount of fluid in the extravascular component. What happens to the intravascular component? The fluid in the intravascular component decreases like that and which results in shock in case of circulatory shock in case of burns. Now when will this circulatory shock happens? If it is a small area like a hand or palm, like one percentage or two percentage burns, there will be no circulatory effect of that burns. But the area of burns is around 10 to 15 percentage like this. It will cause a local fluid extravasation, local fluid extravasation and can result in some amount of tachycardia or any circulatory problem. But suppose the burns is around more than 25 percentage, there will be systemic inflammation. That is, the fluid will be in fluid will come from intravascular component to the extravascular component, not only at the point of burn area, but also on other aspects due to the systemic inflammation. So small area burns are negligible uh, involvement of circulatory system whereas in more than 25 percentage of burns there will be system inflammation and there will be loss of fluid from the distal parts or from the areas which are removed from the areas of burns. Now coming to the infection. What happens in burns? There will be, it will affect the immunological system and there will be increased susceptibility of the microbes to attack the body because there is a systemic inflammation and there will be cell mediated immunity, cell mediated immunity will be altered. And also the burn patients has multiple tube, the Ryles tube, catheter, central line, uh, peripheral cannula, all these tubes are there and these also affects as portals of entry in case of a burn patient. Now coming to the gastrointestinal system, how does it affect gastrointestinal system? Say suppose this is a normal bowel. This is the normal mucosa and having a normal peristalsis lying inside the abdomen like that. In case of a burns, what happens is the bowel becomes due to the inflammation, the bowel will be swelled up. The systemic inflammation which affects the vascular area, vascular system can also affect the GI system. So the bowel gets swollen, the mucosa will be edematous and there will be a peristalsis will not be proper. There will be ileus in the bowel. And the, since the bowel is swollen, there will be decreased amount of area for the bowel inside the abdomen resulting in the abdominal compartment syndrome. There is, the, the, there is not enough space for the bowel to be inside the abdomen which results in the abdominal compartment syndrome. So these are the effect of burns in bowel. So the patient will go in for an ileus and the patient will have defective absorption and this much mucose inflammation will result as a carrier for the microbes to be uh, going from inside the bowel to it can, will be translocated from the bowel inside the bowel to the circulation. This also causes increased infection in burns. Now burns can also produce 
the s car in the burns here can also it can act like a construction ring like that reduce the blood supply and cause gangrene of the distal extremity it need it need not be the finger it can be the hand it can be the arm it can be the leg anywhere the construction ring can be formed in the next part we will discuss about the emergency burn care when to admit the burns inhalation of burns calculation of percentage of burns depth of burns fluid resuscitation and burns and the nutrition burns